Hello there guys, in this video I'm gonna talk about how I work during mastering and how I see mastering. And uh, the way I see mastering is uh, that um, I don't really like the idea when people say don't worry about uh, mixing, we'll fix it in the mastering. Just like I don't like the idea of don't worry about recording, we're gonna um, fix it in the mixing stage. Uh, for me mastering is just a final gloss of your mix and to bring your mix to the commercial loudness level and which is around minus 10 to minus 8 RMS levels not peak levels, not the digital thing but RMS levels, the real thing so for me uh, that's the way mastering works but if you get a, a mix to if you get a mix from a client and you get do anything about mixing just use more plugins to fix what it has to it had to be done to mixing. So what I used here is uh, two plugins. No, no, three plugins because this is one plugin and this plugin uses two plugins, a compressor and a maximizer. And uh, first I used for this example, I used uh, an equalizer. What I did here was to remove some uh, bad resonances. Uh, the mix was really good, yeah. So don't try to fix what doesn't need to be fixed. Because in mastering, it's really easy for you to destroy the mix if you do lots of unnecessary things. So try to be gentle and let's hear the EQ. Let me help help you out about the frequencies. That's one frequency that we need to cut, and that's a second one. Nothing drastic. That's because the mix is really good. clean some mud and yeah next I've added uh, a compressor and a maximizer so what this is the Slate digital plugin uh, feel free to download it from the link below and uh, hmm. in this example I used a compressor and it really works really let me deactivate the maximizer for now it works really gently and uh, check out the key introduction nothing special and I, I feel like it um, glues the mix together and uh, oh I forgot to say that when you do any changes make sure that the output of the plugin matches with you know the the mix volume before the plugin so when you bypass the plugins you get the same loudness so you know your ears will not get tricked by loudness Let's just be back, yeah. Now I will add a maximizer. What I really love about this maximizer is that it you can add the gain, add the volume, and check out the RMS levels here. So as I said, the RMS levels are um, mm, the commercial RMS levels uh, are about uh, minus ten to minus eight. So. As you can see here, are about about eight, yeah, eight dB of loudness, and the RMS levels are. Uh, hmm. Minus eight point five, which is really great, but one thing that you should uh, check out is that even that I've added ten dB of loudness, the loudness is the same. That's the reason is that because. I have this button enabled. 
I love this button because you get the loudness and what this maximizer does to the sound. If you exaggerate it or not, let me check it out. That's a way too much for 10, so I will go about 8. And when you're happy with the loudness, you just release this button and get all the loudness you need. Well, that's uh, the that's around the, what I do on mastering uh, around 90% of the time. And if the mix sucks, yeah, I might add more to more, uh, you know, EQs and stuff. Maybe copy paste this and experiment. I'm not sure, but for this mix, no, no, I don't need to do this. And uh, three plugins for now, it's really great for mastering. Um, so if you want, and then you can just burn your mp3 for SoundCloud or YouTube and stuff. Always make it, uh, you know, the highest kilobyte to get the best sound. But if you want to apply or if you want to burn a CD or just uh, burn a WAV file, export a WAV file at 16-bit, uh, most people like me and you record at 24-bit. So if you want to decrease that for uh, because of the CD quality, the CD works at 16-bit, uh, you need to apply dithering. You can apply dithering using this plugin or, um, you know, or Cubase or Ableton. It's everything has a dithering button or something like that. What dithering does is um, dithering and 16 bit. Yeah. What dithering does is like um, it decreases the sound to a point that our ears cannot distinguish uh, the difference. Because if you want, if you burn a 24 bit file to a 60 bit CD, it's gonna decrease, you know, these bits so it can play, but it's gonna decrease these bits according, you know, it's, it's all random, but you don't want to do this randomly. You don't know what, uh, you know, the automatic uh, process, process of the CD will do to your sound. So uh, just use dither and check out the sound. It be sure that you know dithering doesn't change the sound at all. So yeah, something like that. I see no dif difference. So yeah, my it's gonna dither to 16 bits. And when I click on Cubase or Ableton or I don't know Sonar or something like that, I choose 16 bit for CD audio quality, and click OK and export the file. But if you uh, make sure that you don't use uh, two dithers, what I mean, uh, this plugin has uh, dithering and Cubase has dithering, so just choose one. Don't dither the file, uh, you know, twice in one, <laughs> in one file. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, if you want to check out the song I'm mastering, it's called Power, it's from the album Power of Will and the song is called Power of Will and it's from Alni and feel free to click the link below to go to its YouTube video. Have a nice day!